Hey Shea family, so excited about our next guest. She is a food entrepreneur. She has her stuff in Whole Foods. Um, she speaks French, I think, because I read about it a little bit online. And uh, she's Essie Bartels, yes. and she's the owner of Essie Spice. Essie Spice. Right? So yes. Essie, today I just want to kind of just talk to you a little bit about your journey as an entrepreneur. Yes. And um, yeah, so how did you get into being a food entrepreneur. Right. Um, I don't think uh, I, I plan to be a food entrepreneur. I, I grew up cooking. I've been cooking since I can remember, probably around like age seven, eight. Um, so I was always, always in the kitchen. Um, and so uh, cooking was never something that, you know, back home at least in Ghana, it's not something that is really encouraged as a career. Um, people right. don't take titles like chefs, like, oh, he, she's a chef. It's like a cool thing. It's not something a lot of people aspire to. So um, it was never something that you, you, know, you could look forward to and say, hey, I'm good at cooking. I can become a chef. And that's something that I can make a career out of. So it was never um, in the cards for me growing up. But I knew I was good at it uh, because people would eat my food and they would come back. So. Um, right, for the African woman, the chef, the, the cook, I mean, right. obviously as a woman, you're supposed to be you're able supposed to, to be able to cook, and provide, do, you, know, you know, get a good husband. Oh and, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, right. absolutely. Provide for your family, get a good husband. You know, around, probably around age 10, 11, I would cook for my dad and he would grade me on it. He okay. would say, okay, this was a complete 10 out of 10, like you hit it out of the park. I love this, it's better than your mom's. And then sometimes we'll be like, okay, like, I love you, but this is crap. Like, this was bad. You could have done better, maybe like a six, you know. So all these things were like, I guess, you know, preparing me for the future of getting criticisms, you know, knowing what people like, what they don't like. Um, but as I said, I, I never um, started out to become a food entrepreneur. My plan was to go to college for international business, work for you know, a corporation and just rise up the ranks. Um, and that's what I did. I went to school in Pennsylvania um, and I studied international business and management. I then also did um, a French course in Cannes. Um, and, and when I got back, I got into, I got to work with a Japanese company. So I definitely did exactly what I planned to do, which was work in an international corporation. Um, and then from that Japanese company, I went to another one and I was rising up the ranks just as I had planned. And um, after that second company, my third company, was when I started getting a lot of feedback from friends who would try my food. Um, this wasn't even the sauces, so mostly I, food. I imagine that all along when you're doing this other thing that you're like focused on, okay, I'm going to be a corporate executive. Right, right. In your personal life, you're cooking. Right, right? in my you're, personal life I'm cooking. I'm still cooking. Creating. Yeah, I'm creating, I'm traveling, I'm, I'm experimenting, I'm um, friends are coming over, they're trying my food, they're, and then of course it becomes as he knows how to cook. So every time there's something, they want me to be the one to cook, um, or as he brings the dish and we'll bring everything else. And what were you known for? What was your dish that you um, would bring? I mean, I think a lot of my friends love my um, contemporary, which is like a spinach sauce. Okay. Or like technically it's the leaves of cocoyam, but we don't have that here, so we replace that with spinach. Okay. My contemporary stew and my okra stew. That so was those your two were things that will be requested a lot and sometimes jollof as well. Um, so it was something that, you know, it was always in my ear, like, oh my God, you can cook. Oh my God, this tastes amazing. Da, da, da. Like, are you gonna open a restaurant? What are you, like, what is this? What's happening? Did and you ever have that wish in the back of your head? Like, I wish I could make a living from this? Or I, 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 you know what? I never thought it was possible. So it's crazy because even a lot of people ask me, like, isn't that something that, you know, you can do in Ghana? I'm like, yeah, but it's not really something that's respected. Now it's changing because people are realizing that people are always going to eat. Right. That's something that's always going to happen. And so if you're feeding the people, you're making money. 
Um, and so there's no reason to look down on somebody that's feeding people. They're feeding people. Um, and so um, at the time, it, it was never something that I thought, okay, I can go to school, get a career, maybe learn some skill and then use that to translate into creating something, a food or anything like that. So in my mind, it's a hobby. So I don't know what these people are talking about. Yeah, I'm good at it, but it's a hobby. hobby. It's like something on the side. I'm going to do the corporate thing, make my money, you know, live, you know, the great life and um, travel everywhere, etc. And I was doing that. Um, and then um, a friend of mine told his friend, his cousin, sorry, that SC Spice is amazing and you have to try the food and da 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 da. And so he comes to visit and he says, I'm going to give you 500 bucks. I want you to cook me okra, the jollof, contemporary stew. And this stew. is when you're living here in, 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 in New Jersey, yeah. New Jersey. Okay. Working and living here after school. And he says, I'm going to give you the money. Can you please make me these dishes? And I'm like, oh, so people can actually pay me to make them stuff. And when I made it, it only cost me like, I don't know, 100, 150 bucks. So I'm like, I'm making almost $400 off of making you know these three or four dishes so i made it for him long story short he loved it so much he says i'm gonna give you x amount of money i don't know what you want to do with this but you need to start doing something um and so that's when i started you know the wheel started turning in my head what am i gonna do i can't open a restaurant that's like high dollar volume i have no experience all of that so let me do something that I know I'm good at and I can easily bring out and I know there's a gap in the market for now I realized that I would make these sauces that I use to cook for my friends and my family um, and I'll make them in bigger batches so that I don't have to make them every single time okay. and my family and friends will come get them and so I'm like okay I'm well, how about if I make these sauces and then I make them available because that would be an easy transition to have the conversation with people about African food and African flavors and you know the palate and different spices um, instead of just opening a restaurant maybe this will be the the gateway for me to start and then transition into a restaurant so that's how the sauces started that's how the spices started but um, each and every one of them as well have their own story of how, so how many, they came to, together. How many, spi how many spices? Products. Yeah. yeah, I have three um, marinades slash sauces and one spice blend, so four. Okay, mm -hmm. and I know that you sell them in Whole Foods mm -hmm. and I had the opportunity to see you at Curl Fest. Yes. And mm -hmm. you had created a drink, which was a surprise to me because yeah. when you think of spices and you think of you know, rubs and, and things. You're not thinking, oh, I can make this into a drink or I can, I'm, I'm thinking like, oh, it's if I if I want to cook, then I'm right, going to deal with right. this spice. But I was so pleasantly surprised Surprise. that you can then apply this to a drink. And what was the name of the drink that you were serving? Uh, our Dark and Stormy. Uh, yes, yeah. and that was amazing. So I go into Whole Foods because I'm like, okay, I'm going to, make dark and stormy this because we do a dark and stormy mm. and uh, i go often on the weekends to my friend's house in mm -hmm. the hamptons and they make these dark and stormy so i'm like okay i'm gonna go to whole foods and i'm gonna go buy this tamarind, tamarind sauce yeah. and make a dark and stormy but when i get to the whole foods they don't have it it's right? sold so out not every well not every whole foods mm, yeah have all, all the, the varieties, yeah, right? Yeah, right. But what I did learn, and you guys should try it, if you go to Whole Foods and you go to the customer service manager and you say, I'm looking for SE Spice and you sell it at X, Y, and Z, they will actually order it for you and then call you, which is what they did. Oh. Right? Which I didn't even know Whole that's Foods. That's amazing. Yes, that's what they do. And so I'm waiting for my tamarind O. That's, I, I didn't even know that till yeah, now, you're do. telling me. They do. That's, which, which location I is this? I go to the Whole Foods in Plainview. Plainview. Long Island. Oh, yes. and yeah, and that's, that's right. I'm not there yet. You are, you are the man, the, 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 you only have the um, uh, mango chili. The mango chili. Yes, which was sold out. Right. Right, but I was obviously looking for the, the tamarind, tamarind for the drink. Yeah, and then they were like, oh, but we can, we can order that. Right. So if, 
you and I think which was like a great thing because That's if there's a demand if there's a demand they're obviously gonna go and, and say, ask yeah yeah get it yeah and so anybody who likes Essie Spice and if it's not at your Whole Foods you go out and tell them to go get it because <laughs> it's really really worth it yeah so um, I also wanted to just kind of turn it around to your uh -huh. beauty secrets right uh -huh. or, I know you're busy. Obviously, yes. you're running a business, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and it's a new business, so I can't imagine that you have a lot of employees. You're probably no. doing a lot of things yourself. A lot. Myself, yes. How do you take care of yourself, right? Because looking good is pretty important yeah, to you that, as yeah. a businesswoman. It's, a, it's how, also part of your brand. It's of part course. of your brand. So how how do you do that? And what right. what like tell us some of your your go-to secrets mm -hmm. and your like you know something that is easy right well um, I definitely try to respect my body um, I know when to stop because I have definitely pushed myself a couple of times and then crashed and so I I'm learning now to listen to my body when I'm tired I rest when I'm when I really need it I take time off and I just disconnect um, and as a business person, at any stage, you need to learn to do that. Um, I drink a lot of water. Right. I, no more soda. I, I don't remember the last, I think it's been at least four or five years I had soda. So I don't do the sugary, none of that stuff. Um, everything I put on my skin is edible. And so I use almond oil, shea, butter, coconut oil. I, I am very, very... Um, particular about what goes on my skin and also what I eat and so so do um, you make your like recipes for your skin for too? my skin I do I do I do <laughs> so have are we a, gonna be looking for Essie Spice skin? skin I don't I don't I don't think so let me just wrap my head around the food first but um yes I do it's just you know I'm all about flavors and I'm all about matching um ingredients and what they do so whether it's going into your body or on your skin, I, I, I can't help myself, I just make it. And if I'm not finding exactly what I'm looking for on the market, I'll just make it myself. And especially for the fact that my skin is extremely dry. It doesn't look it because I take care of it, but it is really dry, so I, I have to go the extra step so too. So how do you, so what is like a nighttime routine for you? Oh, um, I... So now I, you wear makeup, you come home, I it's, come it's home. nighttime. It's what nighttime, you, what's yeah. What's the first thing you're doing? I'm getting out of the clothes with all the dirt and everything. I'm taking a shower, you know, um, washing everything off, and then using a, a good cleanser to, to cleanse my skin. And then I, I do use um, a Kiehl's, Kiehl's oil, uh -huh. for a nighttime oil. And then I have a daytime oil as well for my face. Um, and then for my skin is the, the concoction that I was telling you with the, the almond, almond and the coconut and the shea and um, and then of course whatever, uh, maybe something nice and light to make it smell nice and fresh. Yeah. Right. And what about your hair care? Do you wear your hair natural? I do. Natural? My hair is natural. I, I use a lot of raw shea butter uh -huh. um, to moisturize. I use... Um, uh, what is it? Castor oil, and then of course I love, 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 love Shea Moisture. Okay. Um, I use their um, shampoo and uh, conditioner for my hair. That's my go-to. Um, and the reason why I love it so much, I realized a lot of the times prior to me using Shea Moisture, the um, the the conditioner, even when you've washed your your conditioner off. I just felt so weird and sticky. It felt like it was stuck on my skin. Shea Moisture is, I, I just don't know what they put in the formula. It makes my hair, it, it literally, immediately it touches my hair. It's soft. Mm. And so I'm able to comb through it and detangle. Um, my hair is 4C, so it's not, you know, the easiest to, to deal with. Um, and then you don't feel that remnant that I always used to feel with other um, formulas. And so... I just stuck to it. I, I love the the shea butter, shea moisture. That's my go-to. That's the one I use. I love it. 
<laughs> do you have to be, be, do you have to wash your hair? Do you wash your hair like once a week? Or? I try to do it once a week, but when I braid, it's usually like you know a month or three Got weeks. It. But if I'm if, if it's not in a braid every week, or sometimes even twice a week, I'm washing it. I like to keep it moisturized. Yeah. I use so I'm hearing that it's between braiding and then and then leaving it, back. it, pulling it back, or curling it or putting it in cornrows. Do you ever yeah. feel the need to straighten it? Even as no. let's say for work or something, you know, no. like this whole movement of now people can go natural, but yeah. I meet a lot of women who say that they can't wear their natural hair on their job. They have to wear their, like they either wear a wig because people want to see their hair, the hair straight, straight and they yeah. don't want to perm their hair. Right, 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 right. And so you're in this corporate world, mm -hmm. like you're meeting with Whole Foods mm -hmm, and meeting mm -hmm. with all these sort of buyers to, right. to sell your product mm -hmm. and you're trying to present yourself right. in what way? And do you feel right. that nat like you can be natural mm -hmm. and it's okay or do I you think, sometimes think it's not appropriate? No, I think um, I definitely don't feel it as much now that I'm out of corporate because when I was working in corporate my hair was relaxed and so I totally get that mm -hmm. and how you know, in the office, you're perceived a certain way if your hair is natural. Um, I've been out of the, the corporate world for a little over a year, so it hasn't been that long. But yes, at that time, I would always wear my hair in, uh, in braids or a weave or a wig. I never really had my hair natural or out, like mm -hmm. in twist outs or anything like that. Um, I could have a ponytail, but nothing else. Um, Outside of that, with um, the big stores like Whole Foods, ShopRite, and the smaller stores, that I, I don't think um, I'm getting that resistance or expectation to, to look a certain way. I think they definitely see their fair share of varied vendors from right. all around the world. And so I don't think they have this culture or expectation of how you're supposed to look. Um, of course, you have to look decent and, 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 and just presentable, but in terms of those cultural norms and like things, I think it's more with um, the office setting, but I don't feel that with um, uh, the big stores, no. So you've been on, you, so right now it says like you've been one year and you only do SC Spice. It's not your side gig anymore. This is your full-time gig. <laughs> I know, every time I think it, it's like, God. Yeah, it is. It's my full-time gig. It's it's my full-time gig, and it's like sometimes, um, of course, the temptation to go back um, to corporate is like it's real every single day when you can't make a bill or you can't, you know, pay a vendor or you can't, you know, just do so much that you could have done if you had a paycheck coming in. Um, and I know people that are able to balance the two, and I did that for over two years. Right. But what I noticed is when I was doing SE Spice full time um, and also working full time, I wasn't able to get into stores like Whole Foods. I didn't get any of the big breaks with the magazines and all of this stuff because I just wasn't focusing on SE Spice. I, my job was to, you know just do my job at, at, at my old my old company in corporate and it was really hard to divide yourself and really focus right and so I I, I tell the story all the time that when I I lost my the last job I had I lost it in November and my dad says so are you gonna get another job and I said you know what I'm gonna give myself some time and see what happens with SE Spice and if nothing happens then I'll go back because I had I had two offers, one from L'Oreal and one from Mondelez. So getting a job was not going to be hard for me because I, I'm pretty good at what I do. Um, so I knew that I needed to take a chance on SE Spice and see because I could always come back. Um, and I so told apply God. apply this excellence to what you apply, like. Exactly. Apply the same excellence to, and going 1000% from my job. just. Take that time, the energy, the love, the vigor, everything, and put it to SE Spice. If nothing happens in six months, then you know, you know, it might not be the, you know, the way. And then you go back, and you always have that. So that's what I told God. I said, God, I'm giving you six months, and 
Um, in six months, I got on Time Magazine. Oh, wow. Um, I got into Whole Foods. I got into ShopRite, um, you know, and then um, Cooking Light came right after that. So it was, it was my testimony to myself, to my brand, to, to my parents, because I told them, I said, if, you know, if nothing happens, I'm going to go back to work. But now, I think in the beginning, they weren't even sure, like, what is she doing? We don't even get it because my sauces are not traditionally Ghanaian. Right. Yes, I use um, Ghanaian spices. I use like grains of selim. I use West African nutmeg. My red chilies are flown in directly from Ghana. So I use those, but I also incorporate other things from around the world, which is literally my voice because I am, I am, you know, the sum of everywhere I've been, um, everywhere I travel, art. exactly, that's art. my art. Everywhere I travel and everywhere I've lived, I'm always learning about your food, how I can connect that with my food and how to make that marriage amazing. And that's what SE Spice is. So when I would explain to them the sauces, they didn't get it because it's not like very traditional Ghanaian or Nigerian or, uh, or that. So now they're understanding the vision of what i'm trying to do and um now they can even tell my story in the beginning they would ask my mom someone would say oh you, you know your, your daughter is se spice i follow her on social media she's like hey I, mean, I don't know this se spice that she's doing though you know oh, we thank god i just don't know you know but now she's been with me to demos She's with me in the stores. She goes with me to um, the factory. Um, she goes with me to these markets. So she's right. seeing as people are trying it. She's understanding the love they have for it. She gets it because she's like, are people going to buy this? Why would they buy this? But then when she goes to the market, she's seeing them buy it. She's seeing them eat it. So now she's kind of, you know, she's getting it. So it's taken a little bit of a, uh, a slower growth because it's not like, hey, it's this or it's that. It's, you know, a fusion and an amalgamation. So people are kind of like growing to understand where I'm taking it. So, yeah. so do you, so I guess you're, you like goals and you set goals for yourself and oh, timelines, right? So oh, yeah. where do you see, at, I mean, what's your timeline? What's your next number? So you gave the yourself next. six months now. What's the next, what's the next, next. block of time for well, SC Spice? I'm trying to I'm trying to do shorter shorter timelines now because I have shorter shorter goals. But um, I'm trying to definitely get into the region of not just Whole Foods but just the northeastern region. So mm. uh, ramping up production. Um, I'm moving from just having myself as a full time employee and getting some investments to be able to hire people so we can get into more stores, get into more production. Um, delivery, you know, distributors. So that's the next step of not just seeing it in, let's say, the Whole Foods on um, in Harlem or Tribeca, having it in Long Island and having it in, you know, uh, Connecticut, so that you know people can get it that way. And um, just having also our e-commerce set up very efficiently, so that people can order. They can order online now, but just ramping that up as well, so that. Um, we're not in a space where there's a demand and we're short. short. So that's what we're working on now. How did so you did a program with Sonda where you did this uh, fellowship? How yes. did that help you? How did Absolutely. it help Absolutely. So um, I I can't even start to say the number of ways. So um, first of all, prior to going to that program at Tuck, you know, I was like you know all over the place you know I had I had the brand I had the idea I had I want to do this I want to do this I want to do that and in those courses and classes I kind of like helped me to hone in on what where exactly I am where I want to go how I'm gonna get there like this is a step you can't do you can't go here until you get to this certain so you're level able to sort of create a roadmap a roadmap streamline it mm -hmm. and try to figure out the strategy okay am i using um am i going to focus more on e-commerce or am i going to focus more on mom and pop stores where are the margins those kinds of things that you don't think about because you're like this and just working 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 but once you get out and then you sit and you really take a look at your business and see okay this is where the most money is coming from or this is where you need to invest your time and do some research on this marketing uh, model, 
and then put the money there. That kind of thinking that I wouldn't have thought of prior to that. Also, as a bonus, I met a lady there who um, introduced me to Whole Foods. Oh, wow. And so that was, you know, an added benefit of going to the course. So the networking? The networking is by far, I mean, of course, the knowledge <laughs> was amazing, but the networking, and I think with a lot of, you know, Ivy League schools, that's what it is. The networking is what's going to get you so far. I'm finding out a lot of this stuff that I'm um, from today when I was in Colombia. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding out all these um, uh, incentives and all these programs and all these like, you know, benefits that they have for business people if you went to Colombia. And I find out that they have similar things if you went to Harvard. All these things are not available to small schools that I went to. And if you're not in the network, you won't know. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's about the network. It's about, you know, who you know. And sometimes, for example, you're talking about the drink um, that you tried with my tamarind sauce. Right. That's the whole point of my sauce. My sauce, it's a magic sauce, you know. Yes. You can use it for cooking, you know, savory. You can put it on fish, chicken. But also you can put it in cocktails. You can put it on ice cream, yogurt, tea. Oh, wow. So um, this connection, this group that I'm in called Harlem Park to Park, they connected myself and an ice cream um, store that just opened in Harlem. They now use my tamarind sauce as a flavor in the ice cream. And that wouldn't have happened without the connection. And so, um, and it wouldn't have happened without the lady that I met at Tuck who took me to that meeting at Harlem Park to Park. So it's, you know, these connections that you don't know where the dots are gonna connect, but it, it does connect. And so um, you, you need to take your network very so seriously. So what would you say to young, like, it goes back to this time, the thing about time, right? And I read about you giving yourself this six, six months period, right? You're an African woman and African women is always about family, right? Uh -huh. So. Do you think about that? Is that a concern of you? Like, okay, when am I gonna start my own family? I know you're, you have, you're from nine, you have nine brothers and sisters? You're family, well, you're, no, we have seven. You're so, seven, yeah, okay. Yeah, so there's seven kids, yes. And yes, I do think about getting a family pretty much as much as I think about my sauces. It's something that, um, I actually even want to have a kid more than I want to get married. Okay. Um, <laughs> and my mom hates it when I say that. But um, I just think everything is with timing and with things, especially with family, it has to be right. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to finding that amazing guy and settling down and, you know, creating but, that path. But how do you, how do you sort of, because you're focused on Essie Spice, right? 1,000%. Right you're married to this business, I right? am, I am. And how do you, keep that at bay, sort of these, uh -huh. you know, the grandmas and the, when are we getting the big grand, the big grand baby or, oh, you know, goodness. <laughs> the that good, she's not married I yet, know. what's wrong with her? That <laughs> You know, my grandma, my grandma is the only one I allowed to ask me about my marital, you know, when are you getting, when are you bringing a guy home? Because, you know, she is my only living grandmother, so she's allowed. Um, everybody else, shut them down. When I'm ready, you'll find out. I'll get married on my wedding day. That's the answer I tell them. But um, oh yeah, it's it's Africa. You yeah, know, everything is everything is about a lot of African women. They I, have to justify five. why they want to be successful. Yeah. Where a man right. would never, will never, yeah, have to deal with, with this, that. Right? They never but, ask them. But as a woman, you also want a child, right? I so do. It's also I do. Like, how do you? How do you reach Freeze the for, eggs. How do you reach for, <laughs> for, 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 for this? You right. Know, that this business Absolutely. that you want and then also have this family that you that also, I also want. That I also want. Absolutely. Um, freeze the eggs <laughs> okay, if you so can. Freeze the so eggs. <laughs> that's uh, one thing that I'm working on, hopefully. Really? Not, I, I am thinking of freezing the eggs because um, I do want to have somebody that's a partner, not just to get married just to get married, you know, because a lot of people my age are getting to the point where they're getting the same pressure I'm getting. Luckily not from my parents, but it's all these other people yes. on the side that have no relation to you but want to say something and throw something out there. 
And, um, but that's not even the point. I don't care about those people. I care about myself and the fact that I want to be married and I want to have kids. Um, and so until you can find that person who you feel will be a partner for life, which is what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a partner for six years. I'm looking for a partner for life. Um, freeze the eggs and then, you know, find... So that's find a practical the, solution. Yeah, One, it freeze is. the eggs because then you have less pressure to less say, Less well, pressure, you, you know? know. And it's very much a thing that people do now, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's not very African, but it's a thing that modern... The Nobody's modern telling us to do yes. that. Nobody's... But it's like, you know, do it. Do it, get it over with, it's there, and then this way when your parents are like, you're like, mom, I have the eggs, they're there. When it, when, even, I'm, even if I'm 40, right. I'm going to have that baby for you. Hopefully I won't be 40. So, but this, it's available. It's now possible. the guys know they need to come. because <laughs> the, the other thing is, because I'm so busy, I don't really party. I'm always with. I'm always at home. Or I'm. I'm. I'm never like. I'm. I'm too tired to do anything but work or sleep. It's. It's, it's one or the other. Um, so if I'm meeting people, it's mostly people that I've met through somebody. Right. It's not just you know going on Tinder. I. I right. It's people that you're doing to, for your business. Either or people. I'm. Um, yeah. You're people. I'm. Um, oh, right. Or somebody. Or Wani says, Hey, I see. I need you to meet this guy. Then I'm meeting that guy. It's not like randomly going out to get drinks and party. That's it's just not me. I, I cannot do it. I know. I know. Everybody says you need to go out more. I'm like, go out where and do what? I I don't know. It's just never been me. So that's that's the but thing. But for now, it's about SE Spice. It's about SE Spice. But if the right guy comes and he's willing to understand where SC Spice plays in my life and where he will play in my life and, and he how he's doing something too too hopefully yes. <laughs> hopefully he's you know he's not you know he's also there trying to get his own right. and the two of us can you know go at it and then move forward together that's i think that's the plan hopefully i like that yeah <laughs> essie thank you so much for coming absolutely to visit us in Manhattan. Yes, beautiful Fifth Avenue. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> this beautiful gorgeous. space and a beautiful day. And the sun, I know it's not raining. Perfect weather. Thank you guys so much for having me. I really yes. appreciate it. Thank you. And we look forward to your to continuing to follow you on your journey. Yeah. And we look forward to having Essie Spites in more All stores, over the world. Right? <laughs> um, and if you haven't tried it, go out and try it. You can buy it online. You can also go to any, if you're not near Whole Foods, you can buy it. Is it on Amazon? Not yet. Okay, not yet. she's working to get it on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. So look forward to that. Maybe Christmas. We'll give yeah. her a deadline. Yes. Yeah. Give me a deadline. <laughs> I like deadlines. <laughs> Good. And um, yeah, so go out and try it and leave a comment about either here on Shea Moisture TV on the Facebook, go to Essie's Facebook, leave a comment, tell us how you like it, ask us a question, yeah. and uh, yeah, share it with your friends and family, okay? So until the next time, be well, Shea family, love you. Thank you so much, bye.